much. <laughs> My name is Nahima Mill, and I'm a student at Edison State College and a member of the Student Tobacco Reform Initiative Knowledge for Eternity, also known as STRAG. We have six active high school clubs from Naples to Amalfi involved in our SWAT club, Students Working Against Tobacco. We're currently working on a policy initiative to restrict the sale of these um, candy flavored tobacco products that are not covered by the FDA in Collier County. These products can be found in local gas stations, supermarkets, and pharmacies. In the past month, we have met with city decision makers, encouraging them to pass city resolutions to urge retailers not to sell these candy flavored tobacco products. We obtained a Collier County resolution in March 2010. In conclusion, 17.6% of youth age 11 through 17 have tried some of these flavored, flavored, um, flavored tobacco products. Our goal is to continue working through support and education to uh, protect our youth bring awareness to the tactics tobacco industry is used to attract youth in Collier County. On behalf of the SWAT and Strike Program, Representative Pasadena, we would like to thank you for all your hard work and dedication last year with the HB 211, which, include, uh, which included the importance of limiting state permission and the regulation of smoke to indoor smoking, with the intention of giving control back to our local government. I would, like to now, um, I would now like to introduce our Chair in Tobacco Free Collier Partnership, Michael O. DuPonson. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mike DuPonte. I'm a respiratory therapist, and I'm currently the chairperson for the Tobacco Free Partnership for Collier County. As a respiratory therapist, I spent most of my professional life caring for patients who are suffering, <coughs> pardon, suffering the devastating, debilitating, and even typically fatal consequences of the use of tobacco products, uh, particularly cigarettes. As the chairperson for the Tobacco Free Partnership, I've worked to limit or stop the sale of tobacco products, especially those designed for and marketed to young people, and to restrict the use of tobacco products in public places. Uh, last year, Naples was sort of the, um, the mouse that roared. Uh, they challenged the bureaucracy in, in Tallahassee and Big Tobacco, and um, nearly pulled off a number of impressive wins. Uh, though we didn't get the power to ban smoking on our beaches, or the complete repeal of the, um, the uh, preemption clause in the Clean Indoor Air Act, the actions taken here have led directly to some much needed and common sense changes to the laws governing tobacco use in our state, and then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and have emboldened cities and counties throughout the state to push the limit on taking action to control the use of tobacco products in public spaces. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Representative Pasadomo for her leadership and courage in taking on the issue of local control in regards to tobacco regulation in filing HB 211. Uh, though it died in committee, it led to the introduction and passage of HB 891 and SB 1430, which created an exemption for the preemption clause, allowing school districts to restrict outdoor smoking on school campuses. It seems like the common sense thing to do to protect our children from the effects of secondhand smoke and to provide them with a learning environment where smoking is not seen as normal. Uh, may I continue? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm certain that it took courage to support those measures, and I'd like to thank the, del the delegation members that supported those bills. Um, I would describe the passage of those bills as a great start, and I'm asking each of the members of the delegation to co to sponsor or co-sponsor a bill to remove, um, to remove the preemption clause this year. Uh, recent months have seen a number of cities and governmental bodies throughout our country and the world take action to restrict or eliminate the sale of tobacco products and to limit the use of tobacco products in public places. If the people of New York City can enjoy the natural beauty of Central Park and not be subjected to, central, um, to secondhand smoke, don't the people of Florida deserve the same when we go out to enjoy our beaches and our parks? Um, if you can now walk through Times Square and be free from secondhand smoke, shouldn't Floridians be able to do the same when we enjoy our public places? Uh, please take action to finish the work started last year and return control to its very important issues to our cities where it belongs. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Members, any questions? Yeah, I'd like to see that talk here after all. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, while she's doing that, I'd like to make a comment. Um, the, the, interesting, the interesting thing, and just for those people who are really active in it, the Florida Clean Indoor Air Act that was enacted by the Florida legislature uh, several years ago is just that. And it basically uh, addressed indoor smoking. And because they left out the word indoor in the actual language of the bill, it has been interpreted to mean that the state of Florida regulates all smoking. And you know, my feeling is that there are certain, there are certain uh, types of regulation, or not, 
that should be left to local governments. And this is one of them. Uh, the state of Florida does have maybe an overriding uh, um, vested interest in, in regulating indoor smoking throughout the state in, in places. But every community should have the right to determine uh, what they feel is in their best interest, and that's why I filed the bill. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this year, um, uh, whether or not it's going to go anywhere, but I, but I think it, it really is a question of what every individual community would like to see with regard to outdoor smoking. You know, there may be some communities that have no issues with it or not, but let's let the local uh, governments decide. That's how I feel. I feel strongly about that. Uh, just, a, just a couple of things. First of all, um, thank you both of you uh, for presenting today. Um, um, if you would, please fill out a speaker's card in the back so that we know uh, who is here today to speak. And then um, if you could, um, and I know uh, the cameraman is uh, in the back room, but if you would kind of stand in front of me uh, with that chart so that uh, on TV they can maybe see what uh, we actually are looking at. If you look at the screen in front of you there, um, Hold it up so that you're in front of me. There you go. Well, no. See the TV? Hold it so that they can see it in the TV. Turn around. Turn around. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so for those folks uh, on home, at home, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about smokeless tobacco that is flavored in such a way that, that tastes like candy. And creates such oral health problems that it's just absolutely ridiculous that somebody would put that uh, in their lip and think that it's a good idea. You've got flavored cigars that uh, look like uh, candy uh, packages and smell like candy. On the bottom right over here, you have uh, what it says, sleek design. You have little metal containers of a product called snus, which is nothing more than smokeless tobacco inside a little bit of a pouch so that, heaven forbid, it should get between your teeth. Um, and then up top, you've got wrappers that go around cigars or other illegal uh, tobacco products to give them a flavor that uh, is more palatable. And to anybody watching on TV that might be um, addicted to tobacco or concerned about tobacco use, it's all one thing to talk about uh, smoking at the beach or in some of our other areas, but if you find yourself in that position where you are addicted to tobacco, please go to tobaccofreeflorida.com and take the initiative to find out what programs are available to you to uh, stop that and, quite frankly, to save your life. And so please uh, take that opportunity to do so at TobaccoFreeFlorida.com. It's one of, my, one of my strong passions. So thank you very much for you being here, your work as a youth leader to be able to uh, recognize what's important. And thank you for your efforts uh, as well for your profession and for your community. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming.